Well, hello there. It's Beards and Bangers. And today I'm at the NEC for the Classic Motor Show. And I'm with a couple of friends, someone you'll recognize. It's Norman Butler. Hello. Or Simon Jeffries from Smashing Pistons. Hello. And on the time with a, a fellow YouTuber, but I'm also with a subscriber. And on the left here we have Ross, also known as Dinosaur Dad. So hello guys, we're having a great morning so far here at the NEC Classic Motor Show. We start, started filming right by these um, sexy little things, these Metro 6R4s. So we'll, uh, I'm not going to bring you every, no not all about you, I'm not going to bring you every car. Joseph Lloyd uh, will do that, do an excellent job doing that. I'm just going to bring you some highlights, so uh, we'll have a little look around. Welcome to Beards and Bangers. This yellow 6R4 is absolutely gorgeous. But yeah, 6R4 is basically a metro with a custom built Austin Rover V6 um, putting out a stupid amount of power. Now this engine was nearly put into production um, in one of the prototypes, so the, the MG EXE, which was one of the uh, sports cars being considered around the same time as the uh, MGF. So that, that engine was nearly put into production, but wasn't. Um, yeah, not many of these cars around. They are absolutely nuts. Um, yeah, there's not many of them, um, but they do, they sound great, they drive great. Um, it's great here, we've got three, three different colors. We've got the glorious yellow one, we've got the white one, which is probably the most common color. And then we've got this one here in red. So we're uh, gonna head over and find something else that's quite special in a moment. Yeah, not far from the, um, the Metro 6R4s, we've got this midget, so later midget with rubber bumpers. And it's sort of rally prep, so it's riding much higher than a standard um, midget. It's got a pretty serious roll cage of fire extinguisher with two spare tyres on the back. I just I saw this a moment ago and I was quite taken with it. I just thought I'd show you guys. So yeah, uh, a, a rally, rally spec midget, quite interesting. And lots of other midgets as well, which are glorious. And that's a that's a very nice one in the world there. It's a very very early one with probably a one litre engine pump port. Very nice. Yeah, just over by the TR, this rather interesting uh, estate version here with it's got, what do you call it? It's called a tracer. A tracer, so a TR7 tracer. So it's got a vinyl roof with a Webasto, or what looks like a Webasto sunroof. Um, obviously the front, if you look at, let's look at the front, it just looks like a normal TR7, but we've got this extra bit at the back, so it has got two seats in the back, a little bit of a boot, so it's a, yeah, quite an interesting and practical version. Um, I really like that, I like the colour as well, because it's yellow. Uh, next up we've got this TR8, which is an absolutely gorgeous colour, it's really so we know what a TR8 is, it's a TR7 of the uh, Grover V8 engine, but this colour's lovely. It's got a 3.9 litre, so it's not the standard 3.5 litre Rover V8, it's got the, the 3.9 litre, so what would have been found in Range Rovers, MGR V8, um, so a slightly bigger engine. I, what, what draws me to this car is the colour, it's absolutely stunning. And it's uh, also rather nice inside too. Yeah, it's got a modern stereo too, so it's ready for ready for the modern road. That's really nice. Now this this is this has caught my eyes. It's not the stuff I'd normally gravitate towards, but it's a we think it's a Nova Merit. So I don't think the Nova's had a different name in saloon form. But it's uh oh, Norman Butler. Sorry about that. I didn't realize you were filming. It's got a rather interesting um throttle body setup there. So we've got not motorbike cars but they're certainly um yeah you've got interesting throttle body yeah and that, I bet that sounds pretty tasty um, side exit exhaust so I imagine that's going to be fairly loud mini light wheels nice color roll cage in the back so yeah if anyone spots this and knows about this car then do uh, do drop a comment below just um, come into the another hall we've got the uh, some, vo some more voxels here so Lotus Carlton over there. I'm, I'm not going to walk right around because it's quite crowded. And then we've got this. Um, so it's a Vauxhall VXR with a V8 engine, a six litre General Motors engine. Now in Australia, because we've got someone who lives in Australia here, this is called the Holden Commodore. So that's just like an everyday car over there, like a Mondeo or Astra here. But this, 
<laughs> Excuse me. This is really quite a special thing. So I thought I'd show it to you. So we're now on the hunt for a, a, a special Rover 75. Um, trying to talk over Danny Hopkins from Practical Classics. He's a, he's a meet the experts area. So meet the experts and Mike Brewer. Um, but there should be a special rover around here somewhere. Simon, Simon and Ross are leading the way. So we're we're now in we're now in an area that means a lot to me. So we've got the Rover P6s on the right here. This one, oh, this one's got a, an Edelbrock or a Holly Carburetor. So it's a, an Australian export with a chuffing great big carburetor on it. So it's an air soaked manual. Um, yes, what, what three, four P6s, and then we've got. Uh, these are all the. I think these are the press cars. So the WOM. Uh, registered BRMs spawned around here are the the press cars. So I'm pretty sure one of these would have been driven by um, Tiffany Dell and Quentin Wilson. Uh, in that television program. So yeah, that's um, it's nice of these. Yeah, they're all the WAMs, all the all the press cars. That's, that's really good. Is what we'll try and get Bram to look like at some point. So there's a Womble there. Always nice to see some little BRMs. We've then got some SD1s. I think they're, oh no, they're not all red. They've got three red ones. This is a 2.6. That's got the straight six uh, engine. This one, I can't tell what it is. We've got a VTS here, so this VTS is an injection. So that's going to sound and look wonderful. Um, we've got a couple of uh, P5s. We've got a P5B with the Buick V8 here. And that looks very much uh, like a, a Mark I P5. So that'll have the, the Rover straight six um, engine in it. Uh, more ST ones, then we've got some Rover Coupes, so this will be a Japanese uh, Japanese re-import. This one, it's got an FDH registration number. Um, pretty sure we've seen this car before. And we've got this very nice grey uh, grey version. This is, this is a Tomcat because it's got the uh, it's got the turbocharged T series engine. And then over here, got a uh, Nightfire Red, Nightfire Red with a Honda D Series engine. So you had T Series, D, uh, D Series, and K Series of these. Nice looking cars, uh, with, of course, with the Targa top. But more P6s over here. We shan't go around every one because this, this is a highlights package, very much so. Uh, we've got some BMWs and Volvos there, so we won't. Won't venture too much, even though I like both. We won't venture too much around there. I'm looking. I'm still looking for a particular car. Oh, there's Norman. Hello. Now this isn't still isn't the Rover I'm looking for, but look, look what we have here. We've got a Rover Streetwise with headlight protectors. This is fantastic. It's a TDGSI, so it's got, like mine, it's got the L-Series engine. Um, and the colour is burnished orange pearlescent, which I, I've never seen before in the flesh. This is absolutely lovely. They haven't got a rotor yet. Oh, they have, they have. So we know that we know who this car is. Because in the window round here, they've got a year of the streetwise sticker. So we... we we will, we will potentially know who this is. Very, you can tell in my voice, I'm very excited because uh, there's a car at POL, let's walk around here, with a year of the Streetwise sticker. So that is fantastic. And I, I shall pause in a moment to find out who owns this car because it's, uh, it's really nice. Rear really light protectors as well. Yes, it's not just a rare car. Look at the interior, you've got these, rare, these um, circles on the seats. Yeah, and it's also got the orange, matching orange part of the centre console. Unfortunately, it's locked, so we can't 
we can't get in it but i know i now know whose car it is um this is this is really really bright in my day not that i needed bright cheering up but this is absolutely fantastic uh, we've got some other other 200s here so we've got this uh, 200 uh, sxi i think that one no it's a vitesse it's a vitesse and then we've got this um 416 tour which we have seen before at various shows looking very nice we have got more rovers to look at though and we haven't even got to the mgz's yet so we'll do that we'll do that in a bit got more uh p6s so p5s we've got a rover 10 i think this one is oh no this is a rover 75 e3 so got 800, uh, 800 coupe, sorry, which is lovely. That's absolutely glorious. That's an 827, so that's got the Honda 2.7 litre engine. Uh, next, we've got this red, rather shiny 800 Vitesse. Uh, you'll recognise this car because I test drove it back in the summer. So this belongs to Dan Hooper. And if you don't know, Dan always puts a great big cuddly toy in his... Uh, cars at shows so yeah Dan's Dan's VTS is looking rather nice uh, we've got another what, a six hello, hello 600 over here which is looking rather splendid 618s so that's just, that's got the 1.8 engine he be juxtaposed between a a, a a Jaguar and a Peugeot and then we've got some more ah here it is we found it so we've got another SD1 here, but on our left is the car that I've been, and we've all been looking for all day. And it's gonna, it's have to, Fred, excuse me, thread myself through here. It's a Rover 75 convertible. Uh, custom wheels, I think. I, I, I have seen this car on someone's YouTube, on either on YouTube or I've seen photographs or something. Um, it's got these rather interesting, um, exhaust exiting through the the rear bumper uh, so that's i think that's just a standard uh 75 mark ii bumper that's got the the exhaust sort of cut into it um it's a very interesting car so we've got this this uh soft top arrangement here so i think it's actually got a folding roof pretty standard inside um Steering wheel's a bit different because it's got the cruise control on the steering wheel, so that's a little bit different. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful interior, beautiful wheels. That's a that's a different detail there. A little bit of a cut out on the uh, the wing. We'll have a wander around to the front to see what. It's. So it's a facelift, facelift with a premium or V8 bumper. That's quite interesting. Um, we've got some information on it here. Okay, yeah, so it is a V6. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure there's 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 some there's an issue. I think it could be a, it could be Jerry's car, the guy who's standing there. So we'll, we'll try. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So yeah, that's 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 what we were coming to see. Let's have a look at it from the side. Oh, sorry. Hard to get it all in. Yeah, very, very interesting beast. Next to it is one of the nicest coloured rovers you can get. A primrose yellow, uh, cowley built, uh, 75 Connoisseur V6. If you don't see many primrose yellow 75s, this one is. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, let's have a little look inside, of course. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. So I believe this car might be called the Yellow Peril. It is the Yellow Peril. I don't know what gives that away. Yeah, matching that is Andrew, the owner. Let's have a little look inside. So automatic. Uh, See, so yeah, it's just a it's just a Connie. So we haven't got all the bells and whistles, but we've got enough. We've got a proper wood dash. Um, Lovely steering wheel, lovely to the dark leather seats. But I just want to stand back again. <coughs> Very carefully. 
Isn't that just the loveliest colour for a 75? I think that is absolutely gorgeous. Headlights are crystal clear. Um, it is just such a nice car. I, I came over here to look at this Rover convertible, but I've been blindsided by the Primrose Yellow 75. So absolutely superb, lovely, lovely stuff. So we haven't got to the Z stand yet, but we have got an MG ZT here. This is a 180, so it's got the KV6, but it'll have an auto box. Um, and this is a monogram car that I've not seen before. Aubergine Supertallic, paint code IBE. Um, it's a really rather nice colour, like almost clarity colour. Um, very clean engine bay compared to mine. Let's have a little look inside. I've oh, got window flex, apex alloys, that's a bit different. Full leather, so it's an SE. That's really nice, Highline stereo. Uh, rear blind, it looks like it's got the Harman Kardon sound system as well. So it's, yeah, it really is a high spec one. It's very, very, very attractive. Well, let's stand back so we can look at its profile. That's really very nice indeed. Beautiful. Right. So I've just moved away from the Rovers. We've got some American, American barges. Great big things. We've got a little section of hearses here as well. So we've got this kind of a Graceland. I don't know why I think of Graceland when I see this, but I do. Um, and some other, Ford, probably a Ford Granada hearse there. So yeah, all, all, um, all, all, all things are represented here. So yeah, very interesting. We've been joined by another subscriber, by the way. We've got Tom here now, so. All right. A car that I am quite fond of is the Jowett Javelin. They're just such, such a lovely shape with that kind of back it sort of disappears down really really nice um, yeah do like a Jowett Javelin we're back into hall three now so it's, it's, it's a massive show it's about 35 pound for a one day ticket and it really is bloody good value um, rather nice SVR here with its Rover 25 wing mirrors which is quite amusing we're going to head over to the MG uh, Car Club. Zelly MGB there. Lots, lots of Zelly cars. Tuned up. Interesting engines in, in the Zellies. So yeah, B series, all tuned up. Weather car interesting so we're into the mg car club area i'm not going to go around every car as i said it's just it's a little highlights package you can see some of the cars that i found that big healy is beautiful okay, the original midget 1300, which is beautiful. I, I, I really would like one of these. These are seriously nice little cars. This is an MGC with the, the, the six cylinder engine, so it's slightly, slightly bigger engine than the, uh, the B. This looks very much like Margaret. It's, it's uh, different wheels, but a very nice TF. Really nice um, midget on mini lights, but now I'm going to come over here because we've got the the Z register. So I'll know a few of the guys on here. And we've got something rather special. We've got an MG6 uh, magnet. So that's, that's, that's actually been restored, even though it's a fairly new car. And then we've got this lovely um, ZT here, and it's actually a Y registered. So it's a very early pre-production press car. You don't see many Y registered MGZs. Um, that is absolutely stunning. And then we've got the press uh, press car trophy yellow ZS 180. 
Mark 1. It's this lovely, lovely KV6 engine under the bonnet there. Young MG fan. Young MG fan there. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I've got my backpack on, so I'm, I'm continually bumping into people having to apologise. But that's really rather special. We've got a very nice ZR Mark 1 here. Trophy blue. And we've got a car from the X Power Championship, so. Uh, So is this, is this the ZR that's not a ZR? I think it might be. I think it's really a, it's a Rover 25, but they built it to show what they could do. <laughs> Got an MG ZT260 here. And this won't be one of the first. It's a little bit, a little bit too, uh, too old. Some more more zeds over there. That's love. That typhoon colour is really nice. Um, and we've got some more Fs and TFs. Sorry, they're all TFs down here. Yeah, it's really nice to see the early the early MG um, ZS and ZT. That's I'm sure I've seen the ZT before actually somewhere. Yeah, this is interesting. This one. We'll have a. Have another look in a sec. Yeah, so going back to this ZR that's not a ZR, it actually came off the production line as a 25 GTI. So yes, they did. People are going to say, oh, in the comments, no, they didn't build a Renault a Rover 25 GTI. Yes, they did. This was uh, this was one of them. So it was never marketed or sold as a 25 GTI. It went straight back into the factory and was converted. So it's probably the first MG ZR. So we'll try and have a look at it from the side. Isn't that a lovely car? And with a bit of, bit of an interesting history as well. So a ZR that's not a ZR. So another ZS 180 there. Lovely, lovely British racing green midget. And a, I always get this color wrong. It's Vermilion, is it Vermilion? Yes. A Vermilion MGB GT. And this is Gonzalo's uh, uh, 70 uh, ZT in a Le Mans green, which is I just think that's an absolutely gorgeous colour. Really, really, really nice. I'm going to wander around here because you'll shortly see a video from me of a photo shoot that we did a month or so ago. Um, and I thought there were some plans around here for it. Can't see them. Maybe not. But yeah, so next year obviously is the. 120th anniversary of Rover. So the first Rover car came out in 1904. Some people say the MG is 100 years old next year. Others say it was this year. Bit of a debate, but the MG Car Club and the Zip Register are celebrating MG 100 in 2024. So lots of publicity. There's Facebook group. Uh, so look up Zip Register, MG 100, Rover 120. Um, there's going to be loads of events next year. Year of the Streetwise is part of it, so it's going to be going to be really good. But I just cannot see these these plans anywhere. I don't know where they are. Ah, oh, what's this here? Here we are. So yeah, here we got the, the some of the photo shoot. Um, so, yeah, so my BRM was part of it. Austin's. 75 was part of it, Matt Streetwise was part of it, so we had a really good photo shoot. You'll say you'll see the you'll see the video, not the actual photo shoot itself, because that was kind of secret squirrel. But um, yeah, we did a fair bit of that. A couple of that was about four or five weeks ago. There's Simon again. So we've got five, I think there's five SVRs here today. Just see how small the bonnet opening is. Simon's pointed out it's it's tiny. And that's, you know, incredible given that the engine's quite complex, that Mustang engine with loads of, <coughs> excuse me, pipes and cables. Um, you know, quite a complex engine, but great to see so many of these here today. Oh, one of my favourite cars there, Mini Cooper S. 
<coughs> Absolutely stunning in that Monte Carlo, Monte Carlo styling. So this bit here is all dealers, um, car dealers. I hate stress to stress to add, not uh, not drug dealers. So we won't go around. We won't go around there, but. Um, get a flavour of what's here. So this is, uh, just reiterate, this is a, a video to give you a flavour of what's here rather than going around every single car. Like I said, you want to you want to get a comprehensive rundown of what's here, go to Lloyd Vehicle Consulting's YouTube channel and uh, look at his video because that will be comprehensive and Joseph is a very, very knowledgeable chap. He is a walking car encyclopedia. This is an interesting Mini. This is a, a, wondering why it's got loads of exhaust baffles in the boot, but it's actually got two engines, so it's a twinny. Uh, so let's have a look in the... So front looks just like a standard A-series. We've got twin, oh, twin SU4s. That's gonna be pretty tasty. Um, yeah, so pretty pretty standard A-series setup in the front there, other than the, the HS4s, which are bigger than normal cars, but it's got another, <laughs> engine there so that I would think is um, a bit naughty shall we say now I do like this color another twinny here and that is a gorgeous color I do like that um, that green with the white roof I forget what color it's called but absolutely gorgeous little car so Simon says he hates minis but here he is ogling over that is very true Thank yes you for out. yes so uh yeah that that is really nice I, I like that a lot twin engine mini i wonder if it's four-wheel drive but it is I would, I, I would imagine it's four-wheel drive yeah because we've got a very interesting gear linkage there. i don't know how well you can see that we've got the gear leading position much further back than it would be in a standard window so I'm guessing we've got two gearboxes as well so that's that's interesting i wonder how they synchronize we should have to do some research so i like this it's not a pristine car it's a, a used car but yeah not very nice freelander too and we're still we're into another hall now so it's, it's a really massive show so if any of you have not been you know do come i think you could probably still come tomorrow if i get this video up tonight which i really hope i do um Rochdale, that's a rare car. Rochdale Olympic Phase 2 caught, has caught Ross's eye and the kit car has caught Simon's eye. Fair thought, there we are. Very nice. So I, I always think of Lotus as really small, or low tie as really small cars. But this is a clad. I've never been up to see one of these up close. This is, it's, a, it's a monster. Um, it's a seriously nice bit of kit. I think it's got a Rover V8 engine in it. Uh, no, two litre Lotus engines. Blimey, it's a big car with a two litre engine. Uh, but yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous colour. Just have a little peer through here, the, the beige leather interior, box pleat leather, very nice. And then we've got typical small Lotus here. Yeah, I do like, do like low, t low tie, and not a car that I've ever owned. So maybe we need to change that one day. Simon's just said, bloody hell, what's that? And I, I think everyone's probably going to say the same. Bloody hell, what is it? Um, that bonnet is the size of a football pitch. It is huge. Bloody massive. It's got a Rolls-Royce grill. Martin Overington's The Beast. So it's powered by a 27 litre Merlin engine. So same power plant as a Lancaster, Spitfire, Hurricane, all that kind of stuff. That is redonkulous. Um, yeah, the Rolls-Royce badge is entirely appropriate because it's got a Rolls-Royce engine. Yes. So <laughs> what an absolutely curious thing. Let's, let's try and just get, it, get a bit away from it so you can get an idea of the size of that. Bonnet is just enormous. 
Yeah. And I think it's only two seats as well, which is crazy. What an absolutely incredible thing. <laughs> this Daimler SP250 Dart is just, I've never seen one in this colour. It is um, astonishing. Really nice, clean engine bay. They're just such pretty, I think I saw one at the, um, the Cheersley uh, Village Car Show. And they are just such attractive cars. Because I've normally seen them in old English white and red. But this one in this kind of, um, I suspect, non-original blue is just absolutely delightful. They're pretty cars anyway, but this makes it even prettier. Yes, we were discussing these over our tea break earlier. And they, I just love these Fiat X19s. They are such lovely little cars. I don't know much about them. Um, but aren't they, aren't they wonderful? So let's have a little look at this one. I've never been up that close to one. Um, so we've got a target top. So we will have two roof panels that will drop in there. We've got our mid-engine, so reverse that without bashing into this other car. So mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, obviously. Yeah, but real nice. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming these handle extremely well because they are... Yeah, you've got that mid-engine which just puts, puts that weight just in front of that rear axle. Oh, oh the video's not finished yet. I don't know why people are applauding me. Um, yeah, but aren't they, aren't they pretty? So, yeah, we're into the sort of Italian, Italian stuff. We've got some more Fiat's over there. We've got some Alphas over here. Bit difficult to film too much because it is really busy. There are so many people here looking for your cars. But isn't that what it's about? I've got to show you this um, traction event because it is just absolutely. Don't Citroen make lovely cars. <laughs> they're everything. They're, they're always. They're sometimes, sometimes quirky. Sometimes quirky. Sometimes just gorgeous. But this is. Oh, it's a thing of beauty. I just want to, I just want to eat a baguette looking at this. And some borsal or something like that. So, yeah. Sweet. Isn't it lovely? Let's try and get you all angles. I just think they're, I just think they're saying, this and the DS are just beautiful cars. Really, really nice. But the owner's talking to me, but I can't, it's so noisy here. They're my two favourite Citroëns. So the, the DS, yeah. It's yeah. Quite this, is, this is lovely. I'm, I'm into British cars, but I really appreciate these. So. Well, they did build in Slough as well. So. They built these in Slough? Yeah. Wow. So didn't know that. Yeah. So these are built, I don't know how well you could hear the over. They, they were built in Slough as well. So it's incredible. So I didn't know that. So we, I'm sure some of you do, just watching this later on. But uh, what a lovely car. Thank you for talking to me. Thank you very much. Okay. Very nice owner, very nice car. And then we've got this Avocado Green SD1. I'm pretty sure I've seen this before. I think I know the owner. No, I don't. This is John Harper's car. I have seen this car before. But it's not, not the guy I think it is. So there's a, there's a, the guy who collected Miranda from Wales has also got an Avocado Green 2.6. Yeah, so this car I saw at Pride of Longbridge and spoke to presumably John at quite at length. So, yeah, I do like this car. Kind of, I, I see it at a lot of shows and I really do like it. So, another Eto. So, this is the sixth SVR I've seen at the show. So, for a rare car, you always get a good representation at all of these shows. So in this area we've got some of the land speed uh, cars. Now this, I don't need to tell you what this is because it's got it on the side, so yeah. Isn't it a beast? I'm just look at it. It is, it's ridiculously big. Yeah, yeah. Lamborghini Countach, a sniff at 1.5 million. I was going to wander around to this other, like quickly wander around to this other land speed car. Should be around here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Another one of the 
land speed cars. So these are from Gaydon, so from National Motor Museum. And that's one hell of a thing as well. Kind of, it's got a tail. I've never seen anything like it. What a, what a thing. What a thing. So I'm not going to pass comment on <laughs> my opinion on this. Cause I'm going to let you decide what you think. So this car came to us with no engine, left-hand drive. It's pretty easy to expect it. So this is a left-hand drive E-Type with no engine. So <laughs> it put not, something in it. Normally we go in the scrapper. Yeah. So this, this company, Eco Classics, they will take a car like that so something that hasn't got provenance and then put battery pack and an electric it's got two electric dual motor no tesla parts i actually i'm not gonna i'm not passing opinion but uh yeah what an interesting thing charging in the back i imagine it's quick off the line like a lot of electric cars so yeah drop a comment let me know what you think so eco classics e-type jag so it's, this car's been saved just to put it in context by having an electric engine put in it because when they when they picked the car up it was left-hand drive and had no engine so there we are you decide what you think so to, to finish up we've got a couple of interesting things for you to have a look at we've got Corella Deville's Panther Deville here now Ross is just saying, are these doors off the shelf from another manufacturer? Are they from a Land Crab or a Maxi or something like that? If anyone knows, please put a comment down there because we'd like to know. So are, if anyone recognises these doors, are they, are they BMC, BL, what? You know, tell us what you think they are. And then down here, we've got another interesting car. Because we've got a Dolomite that's been Rolls Royceified. So if you have a little look. So look at the switch gear straight away. Very, very interesting. So proper leather seats, automatic gearbox. So it's a, it's a Dolly Sprint Rio, and it's converted by Panther, and it's quite a thing. So we've got Rolls-Royce style grill at the front. And uh, yeah, there we are. A couple of, couple of uh, novelties just to finish off the video. So here we've got a lovely Lotus Exige and it of course has got a K-Series engine. So it's a Rover, Rover K-Series engine, but Lotus-ified. So some would say in better. Again, I'll let you decide whether you think they are better, but yeah, pretty pretty little car in British racing green nice bristols over there the bristol owners club and we've got this rather oh that now this is nice gordon keeble gordon keeble that is a beautiful car there is a lot of money sitting right there because these are rare and this looks very much like the alvis owners club i'm not going to say about alvis and uh, john le carré because i say that in every every time i see a an alvis it's a uh, so I'm going to end this video here because I've given, hopefully given you a flavour of the show. Let's spin you around so I can say goodbye to my guests as well. So thank you for watching. Uh, th this has been Ross. Bye-bye. Bye. That's Simon or Norm. It's actually Norm at the moment, but uh, and obviously I'm me. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like, share, do all that stuff that helps me out. I do like, like it when you do that. And uh, I will see you again very soon on the next episode of Beards and Bangers. Goodbye.